Welcome back everyone to Let's Play Rule the Waves as Austria-Hungary. So things have gone pretty well in this war with the French. In fact, the only thing that's waiting really is for the French to surrender. They have pretty high unrest because they've been blockaded since the war began. On top of that, we have almost no unrest because we solved our blockade issues and we constantly were battling them and winning back unrest by, you know, just winning big battles. Excuse me. Um, now, it's just a little bit strange to me that the French, who are so, um, I hate to say it, but renowned for surrendering, seem to be having a difficult time doing so in our present engagement. Okay, so uh, we're going to let our battle cruisers continue to warm up. Um, once they get up to good crew quality, that's when they're... this. Uh, so, for example, War Games right now is ready. He can't engage in um, any kind of action, or she, I guess, because uh, ships are feminine for some reason in the English language, by tradition. Okay, so uh, we probably don't need unrestricted submarine warfare anymore. We'll wait for the next big engagement. We've got the Four Fox now, part of our battlecruiser fleet. All right, so this is a very good one. We can fire it, um, a ship with multiple of our own ships, and there's less of a penalty. It's surprising that this is the first time we've seen this message, at least if I'm not mistaken. So our subs are still sinking a whole bunch of them, and we have a new fleet battle. This is interesting. Supposedly they have six battlecruisers, so this might actually be a big engagement. It is not. Oh, look at this, the St. George. Now, I'm actually a little bit scared for the St. George because there's almost no ship she can go up against, which is at her own at her own weight class. She's always going to be, she's like a, a featherweight at this point, fighting, um, you know, at least, uh, well, probably heavyweights. If it's a, wow, if it's a battlecruiser, it's definitely a heavyweight, but... We'll just have to see. She's got experience on her side, despite the fact that, like I said, her bridge was hit a while ago. Um, and that killed probably her captain and all her veteran officers. But that's okay. All right, so what are we dealing with here? Uh, the good news, the good start, is it looks small. And we're going to have a really hard time getting the wind advantage. They just start perfectly with the wind advantage. However, if it is a light cruiser, and it is... The St. George has a fighting chance of taking this guy out. We just need to get close enough to bring our 6-inch guns to bear. This is an old one, 21 knots. Actually, I think we actually we outrun it. Speed limited to 26 knots. That's not going to be a problem for the St. George, who only has the capability of making 22. Good, so let's just head her off. If she's smart, she's going to turn away. We're just going to try to get as close as possible, as long as possible, before she does that. We were actually getting a full broadside off for a while there. Okay, now she's done her turn. Let's uh, force her into um, some more turns. We're just going to head right at her. I'm going to let my 9-inch guns do the work until we're close enough that uh, we can let our 6-inch guns go. I'm not expecting our 9-inch guns to be as important. Oh, well, no, I stand corrected. It's really nice that our heavy cruiser is actually able to run down this light cruiser. It's surprising, really. <laughs> Alright, let, let's just go full speed ahead. This could be the obscure end of the St. George, if we're not careful, but I, I am a little skeptical that she has any real chance of losing this, other than a torpedo launch, which we will be trying to watch out for. As soon as we do enough damage, we'll be able to bring our broadsides to bear. It's kind of ironic. You can roll the dice and either try to get a broadside off first, or you can um, try to just poke away at them until they're slow enough that you can get a broadside off without worrying about them escaping. Because if you do a broadside right away, they're going to be moving in the wrong direction, and you know, you're know you basically uh, hoping that you get a few hits early in order to slow them down enough that you can catch up and continue the broadsides. We're going with a different style here. We're going with the style of just slowly picking at them until they're moving slow enough already where the broadside's probably no longer necessary because you're already going to sink the ship but it does it just gets the job done a little faster yeah. Yeah, this is a good course for us they're still making uh, 50 knots so that they've gone a little bit slower we'll do a little bit of zigzagging just to avoid torpedoes. Wind is now in our favor. OK, 
Okay, okay, let's go, buddy. And okay, let's go to fast. This is being dragged out. Just another kill for the St. George. Another day at the office. No, I mean it. You really can continuously run. I'm, I'm really actually not interested. Okay, good. So there's no damage and uh, killed the light cruiser. Yet another to the bottom. Blockading, very good. And, uh, well, so we are building up a bit of a monthly balance here. And I'm trying to... I'm biting my fingernails hoping we get all or nothing armor soon. It is way overdue. Now, I remember I think I had a one campaign where it didn't come until 1920, which is horrible. And I really hope that doesn't happen again. Let's even go to our research and... Um, we are doing... Armor development is on high and so is ship design. So those are the two you would most need. We can't go any higher. All right, well, we're doing everything we can for research. So what should I be using the rest of this money on? I think the answer is, let's in a t for the um, for the time being, let's get some more destroyers because if I'm not mistaken, this is a great destroyer. Um, 33 knots, not the fastest ship in the world. We should be getting up to 36, 37 for the final versions of these ships, but we got another 10 years before that um, really has to become the case, the standard for every destroyer. Let's just get another five for now. And we still have enough that we can build some more stuff. Maybe it's time for uh, a new light cruiser even. Because our light cruisers are 1911? Nah, they're only five years old. Okay, for now we're just gonna continue with our monthly balance a little bit high to save up enough money for the big all or nothing dreadnoughts that surely will come soon. Okay, they're still sinking a few of our ships. A cruiser battle will accept. Hopefully they decline. No, okay, and it's almost nighttime. So I doubt this will be um, a real engagement. Oh, hey, well, welcome to the fight, Mr. War Games. That's pretty cool. Now I'm actually pretty interested in fighting this. Squad Max, Squad Max, we have to do this very quickly because nighttime approaches, but maybe we can do it very quickly. Is it really a destroyer? That's unlikely. An infernet, okay. So, uh, things are already getting... Uh, uh, yikes. Mr. Wargames, please. I think they're at a speed of 27 as well. Are you able? Yep, good. You're actually faster than your light cruiser escort. That's pretty cool. Alright. Get these things going on. Should be a little bit worried about torpedoes, but I'm pretty sure these battle cruisers have at least one layer of torpedo defense. So, come on, give me the Fido. All right. Well, that's probably the end of this one. <laughs> we have to go down to 26 just to make sure our light cruiser can actually even keep up. I think we missed them as well. Where's the nearest port for them? Yeah, I think they would go this way. And we're not going to find them. Okay, fine. Fair enough. We'll make all speed that way, but, you know, it's just not going to happen. <laughs> I wouldn't mind getting over here, but nope, not going to happen. Very unfortunate. Where do they end up going off to? How did we, how did we miss them? I, how did we miss them? Oh, well, maybe they weren't there at the time. Let's look at big ships. Oh, I see. So they went... No. Damn. No, they went... Oh, man, we just missed each other. I was here at... I was here at uh, 1800, 1900, and they were here at 2300. So they were way back here when I was already zooming ahead. They were actually looking for me. Let's see what this battle cruiser is made of. Ah, oh, it's just a Duquesne class. Nothing to, <laughs> n nothing important. Fair enough. Well, that was uh, almost exciting. We'll keep pushing on. More submarines. Very good. 
Ah, the, ba the Nike Manticore has now finished working up, and the Trieste is commissioned. The Habsburg commissioned. Now, Habsburg is actually the, the name of the class. Oh, we'll send a strong diplomatic note. Doesn't really matter. And our submarine has torpedoed another light cruiser down. And another light cruiser down. So even with prize rules, we're doing very well. Yeah, that was really good. Okay, so I'm not sure the Aurora intercepting a French Raider is a good thing. If it's a light cruiser, that's fine. And we do have a Taurus as well. So let's just see what we're up against. This might be another uh, episode of just kind of minor engagements. Let's get people down to flying ahead. And you, you, te you technically have the ability to launch torpedoes soon as well. All right, so we're dead if this is a heavy cruiser, but we should be able to take them if it's a light cruiser. I say we're dead because they probably have a higher speed than 23. Okay, supposedly it is. Oh my gosh, it is a heavy cruiser. Okay, well, what are we up against here? 21 knots, so we can outrun it. 8 inch guns, 5.5. Just trying to weigh my options here if it's reasonable to engage. It is not. Get out. And we'll make for friendly waters. Okay, and speed away. We have two knots on them, so this shouldn't be. It's not much of a nail biter. There it is. We'll slow down to 21 just so we don't have to clear grates. And we'll speed this up. A pretty uneventful episode so far. Hmm. I guess we should be sending. I don't know if battle cruisers can conquer, can initiate naval invasions. Not knowing that, I don't know whether or not sending um, battle cruisers into West Africa is worth it. But let's go ahead and give it a try. I mean, there's no harm in doing it, at the very least. So we only have two that are ready, but let's go ahead and send them both. Finally, some ships which aren't short range. So go to West Africa where you will be joined with only the two other ships over there. Wow, we're sinking a lot of ships. We lost one, but we sank four more. They only sank two. Okay, they sank three. Okay, they sank five. You win, fine, we'll accept. Ooh, they decline. Decline the destroyer raid. Things are, come on, getting out of hand here. Just let's, let's end this war, France. Can't you see we're the clear superiors? I don't understand how they're um, surviving so long blockaded even. Yeah, we have a massive point advantage over them. I bet that their battle cruisers are actually raiding because it says they only have 45 points. So that means at least, I don't think all four battle cruisers can be on active fleet for that to happen because I think battle cruisers are 11 points each and 13 for dreadnoughts if I remember correctly, nine for battleships. Well, our monthly balance is certainly getting very high. Is it time to design a new light cruiser? What do we have in terms of light cruisers? We got this Navarra class, which was the cheap short range one. And other than that, we have the Zenta. But the Zenta, despite the fact that it uses old armor, the light, um, light cruiser armor configuration, it's a pretty darn good ship. Uh, I mean, it, it holds its own. I, I don't even look if we have a Zenta class or a Navarra class. Now, I know because our max speed is 23 versus 26, but other than that, I, I mean, I'm very happy with this original design. The light cruisers that we built at the start of this game are actually just as effective or almost as effective as our other light cruisers. Now, we can build a much better design now because we can actually build inline turrets, but that I don't see the need for it. It'd probably be better to just build some more um, Tiger IIs. Let's get maybe four more of those. So we can just throw torpedoes everywhere. That'll be a lot of fun. Okay, but you know what's also a lot of fun is throwing some battle cruisers. And I'm pretty happy with the design of this battle cruiser. Not having tested it. I just I like it. It's impressive. I think it's exactly what a battle cruiser should be. Very fast, very deadly, and uh pretty pretty well armored, all things considered. So let's get another one of those. Or maybe even another two of those. I really, I have to say, I'm quite happy with the Habsburg. Very good. So two more of those, and 
That should be enough for us. Yes, we'll take everything. Better ASW, better DD. Oh, we damaged a French Dreadnought. They don't have any. Oh, they must have just commissioned one. Well, welcome to the war. Take a torpedo. Hmm. All right, well, another fighting of the battles. The Achilles, is this uh, a Zenta? Okay, old style. I just uh, went about praising this class. We'll see if my praise was uh, worth giving in a second. Uh, we want to go on this side. Oh, squad max. For the love of God, I'm sorry. Squad max. Okay, begin the fire. It doesn't look like they're returning fire, so they have four inch guns. That's a good sign. We should have time to actually get uh, a beat on them first. So there's their four inch guns. Same armor otherwise. Okay, yeah. So we were able to open up first, which means that the ranging is favoring us. They did get one hit. All right, let's just go fast speed and we know how this is going to go in the end. Okay, very good. I think they're starting to regret their decision to engage. We are hitting the snot out of them. Launching torpedoes even. Just to show how superior we are. Not hitting with them, of course. That seems like a good idea. I should switch my... Um, crew doctrine now since it doesn't matter I don't think it's gonna be important let's go ahead and switch this up to torpedo warfare and and gunnery very good apply 12 months very good and I don't know why this unchecks but let's auto am ammo select and all that very good okay well it might even be no I was gonna say it might even be time for us to start retrofitting during the war but we want to make sure we don't get blockaded again. Yeah. It would be quite nice to actually take some of these, but our battleships haven't initiated any naval amphibious invasions so far, sadly. Um, I think we'll lock them up and throw away the key. It gives us prestige, not that we need it, but um, it also, I think, protects our nation the most. Wow, um, six more ships. Okay, the Minerva. I trust her, unless we're up against a battle cruiser. Very likely to win this one. Just a series of quick engagements is all this episode is. If we get um, another such episode like this, I might uh, just skip it, but I think I'll leave this one in. Squad Max, and we want to get above them. They have the same idea. A Montcalm class, another. Well, we'll start opening up, and we've already done so, effectively. Already three good nine inch hits. Try not to let them get away. Another hit, another one. We, were, we took a hit, we took two hits. I got our range, two more, two more nine inch. They're diving back, which is going to give us the wind um, advantage. Took quite a few hits there, though. Ah, uh, that's much better. Four six-inch hits. From this range, let's see if we're penetrating, just for fun. We do have our front turret temporarily off. Whoops, let me go to the details here. Yeah, this is the one I want. But I want these details. No. I don't remember what's our penetration range for the 6-inch guns. Our data is only available for this one, the 9-inch. Now at 5,000 we're penetrating 11 inches of armor, so we're probably penetrating 5 inches of armor with our 6-inch guns. Yeah, I, I guess that's probably clear. And still getting off um, 4 
of our 9-inch guns, even though our front turret is disabled thanks to cross-deck fire. Cross-deck fire was such a great investment for these St. George 2s. All right, let's just go ahead and run this out. I think we all know how this is going. I want to chase the ship. Let me go ahead and chase the ship. So there we go. It doesn't really want us to run though. <laughs> okay, let's try doing this. A little confusing, but it, I locked the camera so I don't have to keep dragging it around. Ah, let's keep going this way. Go back. Man, every time, every time I hit run, we get another hit. Okay, let's encourage torpedo launching. I think it's about that time. Unlock the camera just so I get an idea of how fast they're moving. Yeah, they're moving very slow. Very good. That should be the end of this one. There it is. So we took light damage, nothing more. Right, wow. I mean, who is left in the French fleet, for the love of God? I mean, who do you have left? This is all the ships they've lost in this war. This is all the ships I've lost entirely. This is the amount of ships they've lost just in this one war. Just, I mean, just in this one war. Incredible. What is this? Seven dreadnoughts? Six? Two battlecruisers, a Lion class being one of those, which was actually a very good ship. 28 knots, had very good speed. Six more battleships. Now the number's up to five heavy cruisers. <laughs> like, their entire navy is resting at the bottom. Uh, well, we've done all we can to encourage them to give it up. Yeah, we'll take that. Not that we need great destroyers, we just bought a whole bunch. Okay, another ship down. Oh, good. Okay, four fox. And I think we have enough time to fight this one. I'm so happy, actually. I'm really excited about getting one of my battle cruisers into a fight. Okay, let's. Um, it's 5:30 local time. It's a little bit late, but hopefully we have enough time to engage before the sun goes down. All right, unknown ship sighted. We are going to have the wind advantage. Squad max is 27. That's so satisfying to see. We're already opening up with our 14-inch guns. Both of our front um, superimposed. So, oh man, we're blasting the Montcalm already. Holy cow. Deadly, deadly accurate. This fire, this four fox is so accurate. Oh my god, we hit it again. Holy crap. What a way to start off a fight, just just crushing it. What a great initial battle for our... Uh, oh, they're going slow already. We have we just crushed them. <laughs> oh, I love, I love this Habsburg class. Yeah, okay. Well, let's get close and finish this off. It's already, already over. That was impressive. That was incredible. All right, our battle cruisers are something to be feared, that's for sure. And well done, Four Fox. So yet another heavy cruiser. Add that up to the tally. It just, it never ends. I mean, what? how many ships do they have left right now? No dreadnoughts, four battle cruisers, one heavy cruiser. I mean, this is just a pittance. How are things going in the grand, in the big overview? The grand scheme, well, we're certainly no match for Great Britain. They have a sizable number, but they're also our allies, so not a big deal there. Italy looks like it's interested in coming into a war with us, which we'd be more than happy to oblige them. I could always use a little more territory in the Mediterranean. Hmm. Okay, fine. Well, I think we got to call this episode to an early close here. Um, if your feedback for this episode was that it's a little boring and these small engagements, actually, probably not. The Four Fox was really fun to watch for me. I, I really wanted to see, you know, put the new battlecruiser through her paces, see how she actually performs in a combat situation. 
Now I know that that was against a heavy cruiser and that's exactly what a battle cruiser should be able to take. However, the accuracy and the speed at which we sunk her was really, I think, telltale of a great new ship class. So we'll go ahead and get some of these guys who are in West Africa back home because they're a little bit uh, undersupplied over there. Probably I have too many units. And other than that, I'm going to call this episode to a close. So I hope you're enjoying this. The French War can't go on much longer. I'm just never cease to be surprised at the tenacity of the French. And you know, we are playing an ahistorical game, and I think sometimes it shows, but um, it, just, it would be really nice, though, if they would just surrender. <laughs> anyway, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.